You know what's really cool to have in your base? A multi-destination instant teleportation device. Because of how cool that is, I designed one over a year and a half ago, just before teleporters were broken by the desolation update. Well now, they are fixed, so I'm going to show you step by step how to build one for yourself in No Man's Sky. This is a guide aimed at all players regardless of your glitch building prowess and will show you exactly what to do to build your own. A much more advanced guide that explains exactly how everything works and how to build more complex versions will be coming next week for the glitch enthusiasts. For this base we will be keeping it super simple and only having three destinations, though there is not technically any limit other than the part limit for your save or uploading the base. It just gets very complex after 11, and for showing exactly how this works, 3 is a nice clean design. With the power of editing I'll magic a base into existence that we can install the teleporter hub into. Now we can get building. I'll be breaking this guide down into four sections. Each can be built in any order as they will all be just connected together at the end. These are the array, the hub, the destination teleporters and the circuitry. However, you should plan where all of these parts will be ahead of time. This is due to the requirement to keep everything as smooth as possible being that whatever direction you walk through the teleporters should generally be the same for all teleporters. This is referring to north and south. So if your hub has you walking through a device in an easterly direction, your destination should also be faced as such that you would walk through along the east to west line and not north to south. This is very easy to do as all of the basic building floors and walls snap together, so you can always build to fit that and be exact. But planning this ahead of time will prevent you from realising that the wall in your build prevents you from passing through that way, or that the sides of the teleporter stations block a doorway. While a complex device, the array is best built first, but this is only for easier planning. It is not required. You should choose a location for your array that has a minimum of 1.5 walls of vertical clearance over at least one standard floor tile. It is also good to choose this location with your destinations in mind. If your destinations are further than 200U from the array you will require relays, but we will go through that later. You will also be better off building this below your hub for both aesthetic and safety reasons. It will work in a different location but having the array and hub close together will give you pretty much a flawless experience. Firstly you will need a single wall attached to the floor of your array housing. This should be a standard metal wall. This wall type gives us a centre point of reference and can be changed once a wires have been put in place. The side of the floor panel that you build this wall should also be to your right when facing the direction you intend to walk through all of your teleporters. We will now use the ultimate scale glitch to place a fully scaled cartwheel on the wall centred on that point. Firstly, build a wooden wall. It doesn't matter where as this will be deleted shortly. Switch to the wall light in the build menu, then switch to the wire menu and place a wire connection on the wall near the top then switch back to the wall light. Now scale the wall light to maximum size, and point just under where you place the first wire connection, and perform a reverse wire glitch, which is the same combination for a wire glitch just starting from a different menu. If successful you should now have a large max scale wire on the wall. Now select the cartwheel and perform the scale menu combo by pressing the button for the wire menu and the edit menu at the same time. This should place you in the edit menu. Hover over the scaled wire and press to duplicate. Then point your cursor above the central point on the metal wall and build the first scaled wire connection. Then hover over the central point and perform a wire glitch. If successful, you will now have a max scaled cartwheel flat against the wall. If all of these glitches seem daunting, PC players can utilise simple macros for performing the adjacency glitch, wire glitch and as well as the scale menu combo, which can be obtained from the macro page on zanesworld.com. I'll also link Beeplebomb's guide for these three techniques in the description and pinned comment for your perusal. He's a fantastic teacher and a master at glitch building. The cartwheel has spokes, and while it doesn't technically make any difference what scale the cart is for the use here, having it at max scale allows a far greater buffer to us manually placing the wires with the spokes as a guide. Starting from the top, you can now place wires to line up with the spokes. You'll need as many destinations as you have plus two. So, as we are building three destinations, we will want five wires here. Line up the first connection with a spoke and then place the other end of the wire roughly pointing away for easy visualisation. Be sure to face the cartwheel head on when placing these wires so you place them accurately. Only the first end of the wire that you place is important. Also place a wire with one end perfectly centred on the cartwheel. 
This can be a little tricky as the wire will phase into the cartwheel's texture, but it is quite easy to judge. Once all of your wires are placed, you can delete the wheel. If you plan to add more destinations later, it could be a good idea to put more wires in now, like I have. Going up to 13 wires for 11 destinations is a nice manageable number and won't affect safety. You are now ready to glitch in your teleporters and finish the array section of the build. With the short range teleporter selected, switch to the wire menu and connect to the first of your outer wires. Then drag the wire to the central connection until it snaps, but don't build it. Now perform a wire glitch by simultaneously pressing to build and to switch back out of the wire menu. If successful, you will have a teleporter built protruding from the wall and facing the wire you first connected to. You can now do this for the other outer wires up to the amount of teleporters you need, so destinations plus two. Your array is now finished and ready. The hub in function is very simple, but can get complicated when making it look nice. We need to build two teleporters with one below facing upward and one above facing downward. We also need a wall that is visible from inside the teleporters with a button for each destination. Choose one floor panel where your teleporters will be and while facing the way you will travel through your teleporters, which should be perpendicular to how your array teleporters are positioned, choose a location for your button wall that you can see. Starting with the buttons, I like to use snapping points to get them perfectly placed on a wall. You can get a perfectly spaced grid of up to 9 on a single wall. While we'll only be doing 3, I'll show you how to go further. First, for having them centred on the horizontal axis, you could use a floor panel to move out from the wall. This can be in front or behind, and the distance from the wall does not matter. It just needs to align on this singular plane. This also means that its height does not matter. The distance just helps to be able to see what you are doing. Adjacency glitch from a large floor to a small floor and then build a light floor facing to the right of the button wall when you are facing it. For light floors, we will always consider this thicker line as marking the front side of the light floor, so if the light floor is required to face any direction, use this as the marker. Next, delete the wall and build a short wall in its place, then hover to have another snapped above it, and reverse wire glitch, then connect the other end of that wire to the light floor. Remember that this wire must be in line with the light floor's connector, not including the height difference. If you connect it to a light floor that is to the side, it will twist the wire. Next, build the short wall where you just reverse wire glitch from, and hover snap another short wall on top, then reverse wire glitch again. This time, connect the other end of the wire to the connection below. You now have a correctly placed anchor on the plane you need for glitching in the buttons, and can delete both the light floor and the wire you connected to it originally. We'll now place the last of the three connections above by reverse wire glitching again from a higher short wall, and connect it to the lower. You can add another three either side of this on the same wall by using the half short wall to reverse wire glitch from inside the long short wall, which will shift the wire connection one quarter of a wall's width to the side. Be sure to make the wires you are setting up as vertical in the end. Use the horizontal wires to move to the side, but delete them after, or your buttons will be rotated 90 degrees, which may even be what you want. Once your wire connections are set up, simply wire glitch buttons onto them and rebuild the original wall in your selection wall is done. For teleporters in the hub, remember that you need to pick a place that you can see the buttons from and be able to shoot the buttons with your multi-tool. Also that it is preferably directly above the array. Space for this is ideally one floor panel footprint and two and a quarter walls high with a further half wall below the floor. This is indeed quite large, and primarily due to the function of a drop loader system that allows you to more smoothly travel throughout your base. The advanced version of this guide will be perfect for those who want to play with the design and custom build it to their exact tastes. Firstly, position yourself or the build camera over the centre of the teleporter floor panel and face the same direction as you place the wall when building the array. Hover a floor panel to snap in front of you to the floor you are on, and adjacent to it to a small floor panel. Take that small floor panel one back toward you, and in its place put a light floor panel facing to the left, and another right after facing to the right. Remember that by facing I mean the thickest line on the light floor. Move back toward your teleporter floor panel, and while facing the direction you'll pass through, so the light floors you just placed will be on your right, snap a wall over the right side of the floor and reverse wire glitch, then connect the other end to the furthest of the two light floors. Now snap a wall to the left side of the floor panel and reverse wire glitch. Then connect the other end of the wire to the closest of the two light floors. Now build a wall on both the left and the right side, then reverse wire glitch a second wall on top of each of them and connect the other end to the wire connection directly beneath them. 
you can now delete the two slanted wires that connect to the light floors. Next, wire the floor panel to the bottom connection of both vertical wires. Then snap a short wall on the inside edge of the floor panel, an adjacency to the half short wall. Do this for both. Build short walls positioned vertically on one of the ends of both of these short walls going upward. Then one more and delete the lower ones replacing them with full length short walls so they look like this. These short walls will remain in the design, so pick whichever short walls best fit your aesthetic. I personally like the stone vented short walls as they give a gothic ancient technology vibe. Make this frame double thickness going inward. Then delete the large floor panel and the vertical wires you use to glitch them in. Snap a small floor to the upper short wall on the right side, like this, and reverse wire glitch. Then connect it to the nearest light floor. Do the same on the left side but connect it to the furthest light floor. Now snap a floor on the right side but beneath the previous floor and reverse wire glitch and connect it to the wire directly above. And do the same on the left side. Delete the slanted wires on the light floors and wire glitch a floor to both the top and bottom of these two new vertical wires. Most of the complex aesthetic glitching is complete for this now. It is a lot, but this is all to hide the teleporters and create a really cool look. You now have the snap points to place light floors vertically on the inside. The outer light floors have no snap points, but if they get deleted you still have the wire inside to re-glitch them back. For now do not place the light floors for the inside on the right side when looking the direction you'll pass through, as we will need to glitch the teleporters in within that space. For glitching the teleporters in, you should select the light box. Position the light box so that on the top, the black line is just touching the inside of the far right light floor, as well as perfectly centered left and right. Build the light box, then switch to the wire and count the faint white horizontal lines on the light box and hover over the fifth from the top. Connect the first wire point there, then connect the other end a little further down the light box, keeping the wire as vertically straight as possible. With that wire in, you can now wire glitch the teleporter onto the top connection of that small wire. Now perform the same process but upside down on the top. The bottom teleporter is your departure teleporter, and the top one is your arrival, which I call the drop loader. Having this drop loader allows you to drop into the lower teleporter's range after coming from elsewhere and immediately depart again to another destination, without having to run out and back in from the lower teleporter's range. We are nearly there, just a few finishing touches. On either side of the floor panel, snap a half short wall to the end of the large floor that is furthest from the button wall and adjacency glitch to a sloped wall. Then build a short wall phasing through the vertical light floors. This is an optional step that will stop your character perfectly centered over the teleporter area preventing the occasional misfire from you not standing close enough to the center of the floor. Lastly, we are going to build the roof portion of the hub teleporter device. This just requires that you build one floor on the far side of the teleporter floor Add two short walls on top, then a floor facing away from the teleporter. We're now going to use a glitchless method to shift the height of the floor snap point up a bit to match the top of the light floors. Build a pavement snap to the outward hanging floor and build two more on top of it. Build the floor snap to that top pavement, then two short walls going down from the other side. You can now delete the two floors, three pavements and the lower wall and two short walls and build the floor snap to the lower of the two top short walls, phasing into the top of the device. Build two high short walls around the top of the floor. These will remain permanent, so switch the two we used to lower before if you wish. Then place a floor to cover the top and the hub is done. The destination is the second most simple section, with the circuitry being the most simple surprisingly. At least from a step by step perspective. So it's easy from here on out. For each of your destinations, all you actually need is a powered teleporter. That is it. Physically, the teleporter itself needs to be oriented the same as the others we have done, so on its back and facing the same way. This is due to rotating it or having one standing up along the line will shift your gravity and orientation as you travel through them. In some circumstances, this can cause you to be thrown out of the system, often within the array. This is why we keep everything facing the same way for a real smooth ride. As we went to all the trouble for aesthetics in the hub, however, we will be keeping that trend, though with no drop loader. This is half the height. The steps for positioning the light floors and the lower teleporter are the same, so I will complete this in real time but at a more normal speed to help cement the process. If you wish to skip this part, jump to the time on screen now for what to do if you have a destination more than 200 U from your array.
When a teleporter is more than 200 U from its counterpart, you need a relay of some kind. They are extremely simple, but the one we'll build now is just tweaked specifically for this hub system. The only difference is being that the teleporters are on their back and oriented to a specific direction. You'll need a relay point roughly every 180 U between your array and the destinations. The limitation is 200, but it can be tough to measure the height as most tools for measuring distance in No Man's Sky only take into account the horizontal plane, so 180 gives us a buffer. I would advise measuring with a wire first, as these are also limited to 200 U, before starting relay construction. You'll need a space with a footprint of one floor panel and 1.5 walls high, the height being for safety, so ensure there is an exit for this room as along the distance you cover with relays, the higher the chance of things not loading in properly and halting you inside the system. Building an alloy wall on the same side as the others, so if you are facing the direction you would walk through the primary hub, your wall should be on your right. Place a wire in the centre and the other end below it. Then place two more wires above, mimicking how the array wiring was set up, only there is no need for that precise measurement, as we only need two teleporters, just be sure to not put the two top wires too close to each other. Select the short range teleporter and switch to the wire menu. Connect to one of the top wires then snap the other end to the centred wire connection and perform a wire glitch. Do this for both of the top wires. Other than powering them and connecting the teleporters via cable, the relay is done. The circuitry for the system connects the hub to the array and allows you to travel to different destinations from a single teleporter. You just need one wall space to hold your circuitry, which I would recommend having right by both your hub and array. I'll also not be focusing on hiding your wiring in this guide, so I'd advise using the wire hiding building part. First place an auto switch for each of your destinations, orienting them so connections are left, right and bottom, and that there is some space between each of their sides so the connections don't cross. Then also add an inverter switch. Lastly for the switches, build a proximity switch just beneath the hub so that it is triggered when standing in the hub's teleportation area. Before we connect any wires, you'll want a number of few things, either directly in game with decals or in a notepad, so you can keep track of which connections mean which. Number the buttons on your destination selection wall at the hub, number the auto switches, number the teleports in the array, which for those I like to just go left to right from one, with the last two on the right being hub and then drop loader, but also number your destinations. Now for each of the auto switches, connect the left and bottom connections with a wire. Then connect the left connection on the auto switches to their respective numbered buttons, right connection on the destination selection wall. Next, connect all of the right connections on the auto switches to a single point in the circuitry wall and then connect that single point to the lower teleporter in the hub. Now connect the left connector on the auto switches to their respective numbered teleporters in the array. Connect the right connector on the power inverter to the drop loader teleporter in the array, which if you followed my numbering suggestion should be the rightmost teleporter connection in the array. Then connect the bottom connection on the power inverter to the proximity switch. That is all the hard circuitry done. All that is left is to connect power lines and the teleporter cables. However you are supplying power, whether it is through solar panels paired with batteries or electromagnetic generators, this hub system requires very little power at all. This three destination system requires only 45 units of power. You would just need to account for a further 9 units of power for each additional destination from the first three, and 10 units of power for each relay required. With your power set up, just connect the power supply to these connections with your wires. The left side connector of all buttons on the destination selection wall. The left connector of the power inverter. The empty connector on the proximity switch. All destination teleporters. All relay teleporters. And lastly, all light floors used in your hub and destination teleporter setups. So they look all snazzy and inviting. For connecting your teleporter with the teleporter cable, just connect the drop loader teleporter to its respective teleporter in the array, which as mentioned before, if you have numbered via my suggestion will be the rightmost connection when viewing from the top end. Connect the hub teleporter to the respective in the array, so the rightmost but one. Then connect the destination teleporters to the numbered teleporter in the array that matches, which should be left to right starting from one. If you have any relays on the way to a destination, just account for that by connecting from the array to the relay, then either relay to another relay or the destination. And with that, you are done. It is possible that you may encounter a few issues. The design we have here is optimised to minimise problems, but some things are just out of my control, primarily the size of your base. 
If you have built a base that has building parts popping in and out of existence, it is a little large and or complex and this teleportation system may not work very well. As if other parts are popping in and out, then so are parts of the teleportation system. This can also be an issue with particularly far destinations. Usually a teleporter is safe to travel as if it has not loaded the other end, it will not teleport you. So we'll wait those extra seconds or less for the loading to happen before sending you on your way. In this system, it will send you into the array regardless of whether the other teleporter connections from the array are loaded, and so planting you in the array. This is why above the array and all relays, we must have enough clearance to jetpack out and then an exit from that room. If you are modest or even just aware of your base's integrity for size and complexity, this will likely never be an issue. However, if distance or popping is an issue, there are a few things you could consider in regards to relays. First is to ensure that all relays could be viewed from both ends of the teleporter network. This may require some to either be on towers or even floating, but the primary thing is to not have terrain blocking them from view, though build pieces like its housing should not matter here. Another is to not only power both teleporters with a solar panel at the relay site, but also stretch a powered wire to the relay from the starting positions, if multiple relays, and chain them. By doing this you are adding more safety and increasing the chances of success on longer distances. If you have a single relay, doing this method will ensure you always reach your destination correctly. If you have any questions at all on this teleporter hub, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. If you'd like to, be sure to hit the like button and share with your friends. I think this could be a really fantastic addition to most people's bases, and I can't wait to see what different designs people use for their hubs and destination units. Remember that a far more in-depth and advanced version for this system is coming where I'll go into how each component works so that you can adjust things more to your liking and just go nuts with it. If you wish to help support Zanesworld, we have YouTube memberships and a Patreon where I'll get the videos to you early whenever possible as well as discounts on merch and periodic updates on how things are going with the channel, Discord and website. Have a fantastic day folks.